let's study about cognitive learning theory and frequently it is also called as, as gestalt learning theory. Are you constantly uh, aware of your cognition and the changes in your mental model or mental schema when you learn something new? Today, I'm going to share more regarding uh, this uh, cognitive learning theory. There are critics to behaviorism in the previous lecture and it's because learning is not just through trial and error, stimulus and also respond with association only. And learning uh, it also encompasses the main idea of cognition, which behaviorism did not include that. And cognition uh, is a Latin word. It means cognitia, which means also to know or to recognize or to conceptualize. And for cognitive learning theory, or what we call it as gestalt theory, gestalt means a whole, a whole composition, a total composition. When an individual learns an object as a single entity, it is not a part or a bit that they learn. It is encompasses the whole objects that they learn as a single entity. And the whole is greater the sum of its parts. And it can foster greater understanding about the piece of the knowledge that they learn. This is applicable to learning uh, and also in terms of uh, design and principles of design it's also based on the idea of the whole or the idea of gestalt theory learning uh, in cognitive uh, learning theory learning occurs when learners are able to add new concepts and ideas to their cognitive structure. And when learning occurs, the learner is able to recognize a relationship between something that they already know with something which is a new that they are currently under uh, their learning. So that's uh, recognizing in terms of the relationship occurs means learning occurs as well. And learners by then has the insight to realize some new learning more directly happened in their mental or in their cognition. So in uh, the uh, previous time, there are a group of cognitive psychologists. There are many of them from Germans. Kofka, Widmer, Kohler, they are the cognitive psychologists who also did some experiments based on uh, animals. They have some encounter and they define cognitive learning theory is a learning uh, which is a very internal process that cannot be observed directly through behavior. And this is opposed to the behaviorism. Knowledge is acquired, stored, and retrieved to solve problems. And in cognitive learning theory, knowledge can be observed in that way. And learning involves mental schema, which is the units of knowledge, each relating to one aspect of the world, including objects, actions, and the abstract concepts, such as the understanding about theory. And in cognitive learning theory, there are some processes in learning, which are selecting is one of the process. Learners are able to select important information for their learning, and learners are able to manage uh, limited capacity in the working memory and therefore 
learning involves associations established through contiguity and repetition so that uh, the learning can be continuous okay, from one level to another. So learners are required, are, are experiencing the processes of managing uh, their learning uh, processes and learning uh, steps. And learners also integrating information, especially new information to their existing uh, knowledge in which learning involves subsuming new materials to the existing cognitive structure. And every cognitive structure for each individual, each learners are different. And in the process of learning, cognitive learning theories stress also in terms of the retrieval of the new knowledge when required and also to build up the new knowledge based on the existing knowledge. So these are the processes. And in, uh, among the theories who are very popular is Piaget, Yon Piaget, who proposed genetic epistemology and also who proposed a cognitive structure uh, as a concept to better understand about cognitive learning theory. In cognitive structure, our cognition uh, is able to be divided into the organization of the cognitions. And when a new learning happens, so the learners will experience adaptations. Adaptations involve two main processes, which is assimilation and also accommodation. These are all happened uh, in the cognitive uh, cognitions of an individual. Assimilation is the process of fitting new experiences into existing schema of patterns of behavior. Assimilate or absorption by fitting new experience into existing schemas. Accommodation, on the other hand, means the process of changing existing schema to incorporate new experience, which means there are some changes in the schema. And in order to fit the new knowledge comes into, uh, comes into the cognition. Piaget pioneered a way of thinking about how children grow psychologically. It is the growing apprehension and also the adaptation to the physical and also social environment of the child. And the child experiences uh, this cognitive structure as well. And Piaget is a proponent to non-intervention-based learning approach, where he says everything once who teaches a child prevents him from inventing or discovering. So he is a proponent of discovery types of learning. Piaget uh, proposed the ideas of a cognitive um, development that uh, has an a important concept on assimilation and also accommodation as explained previously. And the process of adjusting Okay, adjusting uh, the, the new knowledge come into the cognitive structure is called as equilibration. Equilibration or equilibrium happen when, it, uh, when a child schemas can deal with the most new information through assimilation and there are some balancing. Okay, and balancing or maybe there are some unpleasant uh, states of a child that uh, they are not like uh, satisfied in terms of like uh, the understanding of the new information can be fitted into their existing understanding. So that situation is called disequilibrium. And it requires some uh, assimilation and also accommodation 
of the new knowledge to the new uh, structure of the cognition. So this is uh, called a concept of equilibration. And many learners like us, adult learners, we also experience that. Piaget co cognitive development occurs due to the biological matura maturation and also interaction with the environment. And from uh, this notion, the child know usually should be encouraged to interact with their environment in order to learn new information. Children progress from stage to stage through their experiences, such as uh, showing in these uh, pictures. And they can learn socially, some social skills based on their social experience, and also they can learn from the environment. And they are able to assimilate and also accommodate some new things that they learn from time to time through their uh, growing experiences. So Piaget has a popular uh, uh, notion about the stages of cognitive development. So there are four main stages to be presented uh, here. So according to Piaget, sensory motor stage happens when the infant or the baby at birth until the two years old, they are able to explore the world through their senses. The five senses and the baby are able to observe what they see, what they hear, and what they feel, etc. And they are able to explore the world and also to uh, form their perceptions in terms of the cause and effects. So when they feel the environment is cold, so they will be, uh, the, the baby will cry because of cold and the mummy will bring uh, uh, the babies to the warmer place. And also the child, the infant is able uh, to follow with eyes. So they have their sight, sense, and they are able to observe also. And the baby is able to differentiate between self and also object or physical object in the external world. And from there, baby can learn based on their senses. This is the stage called sensory motor stage. Next, when the child grow older, from the age of two and to seven, this is the stage that according to Piaget is a pre-operational stage where the child is able to communicate through speech and also engage in symbolic activities. They are able to acquire some words and also to communicate through some symbol, for example, like language or maybe hand gesture. And during that time, the child also able to develop their numerical abilities okay, by counting and also relate the symbol of two with the number that they count, that they can count. So that is the development of their numerical ability in this stage. And they also can classify different types of shapes okay, to different categories. That is where the child is also able to learn about shapes, about colors, and they are in this stage fairly egocentric, very self-centric, and they are able to learn to increase the level of their self-control as well, and able to behave in the public area. So this is where the child is experiencing pre-operational stage which can be observed normally within this age range. Another stage further on is the stage of uh, 7 to 11 year old that is called as concrete operational stages in which the child can do uh, 
conservation task, conservation task in which they are able to recognize that a substance remains the same through its appearance, though its appearance changes. For example, like uh, they are able to learn about uh, the room, uh, the place in the room which is decorated for birthday party, and they are able to know there are something happened, something uh, happy or somebody's uh, birthday is, is happening. And this is where the child is able to relate. And also, especially in terms of mathematics idea, okay, they are able to, to know certain uh, conservation, okay, I, some changes in terms of, you know, the, the use of the shapes, okay, for other purposes, for other uh, levels of the learning. So they are able to differentiate that. And in this stage, the child is able to increase their abstraction reasoning and their ability to generalize also from their concrete experiences. So they are able to know uh, the, the abstractions idea in terms of uh, colors that can represent moods, things like that. Okay, on the next stage, which is a more established stage, which is a formal operations stage, age 11 and above. So in this stage, the child, the person can form and also test hypotheses. They are able to gain the abstraction skills and they are able to have higher uh, order in terms of their thinking and they can organize information and also make reasoning, okay? Have a reasoning thinking in the scientifically way. And the trial steps, these are the trial steps that the, the child or the young adults is able to form the abstract conceptions uh, in this stage. And they can continue to learn to the more higher order thinking skill set which is required. So in the, I have done uh, some explanation about uh, Piaget stages of cognitive development. In the next part of the lecture, I will talk more about uh, other learning theories as well, especially related to cognitive learning theory, which is uh, Brunner's Discovering Learning and also Brown's Cognitive Apprenticeship. Okay.